Good evening. This is Edward and Anne. It's March 2nd, Saturday evening. And I'm going to read some notes from about 30, 35 years ago that we've had. Some highlighted meditations. These are really focused on really principally where we are at right now, which is the pursuit and finality of resurrection life and the transformation of our body. So I'm just going to read you a few thoughts here, a few notes. Psalms 36.9 In thy light we shall see light. When you stand in his presence... You see everything. Now we'll go to Ezekiel 10, verse 10 through 12. This speaks about the, it's very symbolic, but it speaks about those who were around the throne. They had eyes all around. Ezekiel is a very mystical and um, book, and a lot of imagery a lot of symbolism. And in essence, you might say, well, those who have eyes are allowed to stand around the throne. Or is it that they who stood in the presence of the Lord were then given eyes to see everything? And that is it. When you come to stand in the presence of the Lord, you have an awareness of everything that you need to have an awareness of. You can look at anything you want to see and know what it is, for it will be spiritually discerned. What is the key? To stand in His presence. Because when you stand in His presence, you're given eyes to see everything. It's interesting. He that is spiritual discerns all things, but he himself is discerned of no man. No one can see him. And this is how it's been for Anne and I, and very possibly for all of you. At first you begin to wonder, as I did, I'm at a place that no one knows what I'm doing. Maybe that's not so bad. Maybe they'll have to come up higher before they will see. When the Lord spoke in John 14 that I go to prepare a place for you, he was chiding Philip that Philip didn't know him. He'd been with him all that time, and yet Philip didn't know the Lord. He wanted to bring them up where they would know the Father and know him, but he couldn't tell them. As they, the disciples, and as they, the sons of God during this time, progress higher. Their perception, our perception, your perception, and awareness will increase. And this is what we have lived, even as the early disciples experienced this, as they progressed higher and higher up in their relationship to the Lord. There is no truth, but that we see it through God's eyes or from his presence. The only way to know and discern truth is from that vantage point, from that point on the summit of the mountain. And only at that point are we truly able to know truth. And believe me, there is so much deception, darkness, lies, illusion, that is in the earth plane today. That the only way that we will know truth concerning anything, even the minute issues that you deal with day in, day out, or problems, will be through God's eyes and from his presence at the summit of the mountain. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Christ 
is the way to his presence. The truth is what you see when you get into the presence of the Lord. And the life, resurrection life, will be the next step for us. These are the progressive unfolding stages of those who will stand in the parousia of the Lord during this time. The most important thing of revelation to come is to understand how God wants to sanctify us, spirit, soul, and body, and to preserve us blameless at the coming of the Lord. So we're on a drive to see the end of the flesh, which has so dominated our senses that we've not been able to see God in a clear manner. And for that matter, the whole spirit world is unseen by most all of the people on the globe because they live in the realm of the flesh. Which is why the scientific world never found will or never will find God. The quicker that we get rid of the, the flesh by the cross, the better we are. The flesh does not see God. That's why Jesus could say to Philip, Have I been with you so long and you haven't seen me? You haven't known me. The soul sees through the distortion of its own emotions and realm, conditioned to respond. This is where TV lives, the media, the news, and the radio lives. In the spirit realm, the realm of our spirit, we can see and discern. We can see clearer and better than if we were right there seeing it with our natural eyes, interpreting it through our reasoning. It's interesting concerning the revelation of the communion. Paul said, I have received of the Lord that which I gave you. Paul had the greatest revelation of the communion because he had not been there. It was divinely revealed to his spirit. The highest level of revelation came by revelation. We are coming to stand in his presence and discern by our spirit all things. We will worship by a revelation of the Lord's presence. And by a revelation of the Lord's presence, we will worship. This is the time of the Prusia. We are so deep into this time. There is no spontaneous parousia, but a people who are prepared will enter into the parousia, and this is happening now. A people that God is preparing are coming to the last stages of their purification, and they are entering into God's presence, even now, beyond our capability of understanding and grasping, we have moved more deeply into the presence of God than we have any idea. And that's hard to understand. You would think, well, when I come into the presence of God, I'm really going to know that. And yes, there are elements of an awareness, a sensitivity, things that you will have but we're talking about something more than just a, an experience here or there, but something that enters into a level of his presence that becomes a place of our abiding that is on a deeper level than we are presently able to discern. It's like trying to discern the indwelling of the Godhead that is so deeply manifesting right now in the sons. And you could say, well, I believe that. I bear witness to it. And there are times when you have breakthroughs and you sense it, and you sense him within you speaking. But those moments don't last as long as you would like. But the fact remains, they're just little outcroppings of something much deeper 
that's at work, and that is the indwelling of the Godhead within you has gone so much further down the road than you know. And we're playing, we're playing a great deal of catch up right now, catching up to an awareness of something that has already been done within us. But we are yet not that aware of it. Christ knew that there would have to be a progressive unfolding for a people that would rise in the spirit to the spirit realm. The greater works are spirit realm realities. Do we understand that? From the very beginning, the Lord said the real miracles of healing would not be that which just deals with the, with the, the physical body but that which deals with the spirit, the soul, and the body. The greater works were never attained in the New Testament because they were limited to the physical and the soul. The kingdom will be a relationship of spirit that controls all other relationships. Once I am one with God in the Spirit and I stand in His presence and worship, then I have no difficulty in my interpretation, my response, or my relationship to anyone else. For in His light, we see light. Christ was training His disciples to communicate in the Spirit. It had to be a flow More than just thought, it was power and love, flowing together with each other, communing with each other and the Lord at all times. And this is happening for the sons as they shift in their mode of communication. We have been so used to communicating by virtue of our audible words, but that has been far too limiting because it hits everyone's different paradigm or view of reality or conditioning. But real communication will be from spirit to spirit. It was necessary for the Lord to go away because they were limited. They knew him by the senses, but they did not know the Lord by the spirit. And he said, I will go away. But I will come to you. And he did, only in a different way. We live in God's heart. And the objective God has is a pure flow from the Lord, the Spirit, to us. Second Corinthians 3. He brings forth revelation, and that is change. And the ultimate goal is that we know one another after the Spirit and not the flesh. And you really don't know anyone until you know them by the Spirit. Then we have the key of real oneness. The objective is the flow, not just the communication. And it goes way beyond everything. Thoughts, everything. It's God flowing to you, through me, from you to me. This is God's objective. If I write a letter to you, some of me will come through in what I write. But if we can stand in his presence of the Lord and talk, that's much better than a letter. In the days of the kingdom... We will have the seers, and this is, this is now, the seers who are both prophets and priests, and we will bring the people into his presence. Our spirits are like a recorder, and that recorder is running all the time. 
always recording what is coming from God, and always playing back to God the cries, the communications, the fellowship and the worship of our spirit to Him. It is truly prayer without ceasing. No one can do that on the physical level, and the soul does not have the concentration span to continue it because it's always distracted by present circumstances and relationships. But our spirit can stand in his presence. The book of Revelation is talking about a people right now on this planet standing in his presence, worshiping day and night, praying without ceasing. How? By their spirit. The parousia is not characterized by events so much as it's a perpetual presence of the Lord that we practice. And we will not live in one another's heart unless you live in the heart of God first. Communication will always be a problem if we're dealing on the realm of soul until you move up to the level of spirit. And when our spirit comes fully alive, it will affect our physical body, the quickening of our mortal bodies, and the physical will respond. This is happening progressively, incrementally, but this is happening right now. The physical processes of death, decay, and futility are being reversed right now because of the breakthrough that we are having in the spirit, and this is the last area. With this breakthrough in spirit that we're contending for right now, our bodies will respond because they're going to respond to our spirit and not the soul. Resurrection life begins with our spirit and then reaches to the soul through a process of the cross bringing an end to the soul life, and then begins to make our soul come alive to God. And the last one, the one we're ready for now, is the physical body. I wonder if we're not entering into the breaking of barriers, not only for us, but what about those who died in the faith? Hebrews 11. For they without us are not being made perfect. Remember, this is a word, these are notes from 35 years ago. Does this mean that we can actually enter into resurrection life and then go back and minister to the cloud of witnesses and help them to break through? That whatever they had from God in their spirit can now be ministered to their soul and flesh and there will be a resurrection Is it possible that even the first resurrection is not that sovereign of event, but that God will even use those of us who break through to see to it that they come forth? It is not that we precede them. They have preceded us. But the word also says that they without us will not be made perfect. What a mantle the sons of God have, so much far greater than than we, we really understand. Because... This is happening. This is going to happen. I have seen this going back in time to minister to the different cloud of witnesses. This is already happening right now. We're in the midst of this transition out of, the, out of this body of death into a new body of life. As we come to Mount Zion, Hebrews 12, to the spirits of just men made perfect, Now we begin to understand what Hebrews 12 is talking about. The kingdom that cannot be shaken starts with loosing the spirits of just men made perfect. And you can take 1 Thessalonians 4. We haven't got ahead of them. Their spirits were perfected ahead of us. But they will not be made perfect in the soul and physical resurrection without us. How many of the spirits of just men made perfect are in the earth right now? 
How many? You get into the realm of spirit, which is what God is doing, is drawing us up higher. We're ascending. We're coming up in the Father's house. We're leaving the realm of, of confusion and turmoil and soul. And we're coming into the realm of spirit. And everything else will be like opening a couple of valves. Your soul life ends. The work of the cross comes alive. Your spirit makes everything of your soul come alive after the work of the cross. What about the physical? I believe it's the same thing. It's just opening a valve. Life, life flows into the mortal body. And the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead makes alive the mortal body of the sons. Some place, those who hear this word 35 years ago will go into travail to see it manifested in the mortal flesh. That's what's happening 35 years later. We're at the culmination of this word. The next step is the unfolding of the Prusia, people who live in his presence. This is what God is after. A people who stand and live, function, move, and see in his presence, in his heart. This is like John. They no longer lean on his bosom, but live in his heart, in the Holy of Holies. These are the seers and the priests. We will continue to live in his presence, and incidentally, the greater works will happen. The signs will follow. As you stand in the presence of the Lord, you will see everything. That intense perception came from men of prayer. You don't have to teach on the gifts and the ministries and all of the restoration. Just stand in his presence and it will happen. Stand in his presence and let him be the chief apostle through you. Amen, Lord. Thank you.